We're talking about this topic today, uh, how to find your voice or style, which I believe somewhat is uh, a little bit different, uh, but you can find them both on the same path. Um, we're talking about that today because I recently did studio visits with students at a local art school and because a lot of them sort of voiced their frustration about you know the work that they were doing they were trying to figure out how to find their voice how to find their style and sort of they were frustrated about you know being on that journey especially you know when you have a thesis or you know homework or you're trying to just be different and a lot of times I have to tell them that, you know, they're at the beginning of that journey and it just takes a long time. And it's mainly because they just haven't lived a long life enough to where, you know, you can bring all those influences into your sort of practice or your artwork or your creative space. To go back a little bit and sort of talk about, you know, that creative process and sort of finding what makes you unique, a lot of times when we start out, we're sort of starting out in the phase called mirroring and we're just copying other artists. And this is like when we're young, you know, basically you're watching cartoons. A lot of people today will watch Dragon Ball Z. You know, I used to watch that as well. I was watching Garfield as well and Dilbert and all these sort of cartoons when, you know, I was young, Doug. So basically I used to copy a lot of those characters when, you know, I was just doodling in the notebook. So I would copy, 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 copy. That phase is like your learning technique. I'm learning how to sort of draw a nose this way, this way, and this way. I'm learning the foundation of, you know, sometimes illustration. Even if you're sort of doing photography and you're just starting out, you know, you're copying other photographers and sort of how they sort of view, um, you know, a, a frame or sort of a scene. You know, you're copying these techniques and that's what, you know, you do in school as well. You're copying the master, you're copying sort of artists, you know, that have been out there for a while and you're just learning technique, you're learning how to dissect and analyze their process and you're sort of re replicating it in your practice so that you understand foundation, you understand technique, you understand mediums, you understand sort of, you know, all the above. You're just sort of trying to figure out how other artists have done it. So that's the mirroring phase. You're just copying and learning foundation and technique and just like the, the, the bare bones. But then, you know, you want to explore outside of that. That is when we get to the second phase and that's really exploring. And that's really sort of, you learn the foundations, the mirroring, now you're sort of bringing in your own influences and sort of remixing things. You're sort of twisting things around. You're sort of uh, deconstructing, you know, someone's technique and then reconstructing it differently. Uh, so that is sort of like the explorative phase. That is sort of where a lot of artists are now. One of the reasons why this is so difficult for a lot of artists is because it just takes time. It takes time to sort of unearth a lot of those influences in your background and figure out how to use that in your studio space to sort of remix an idea, remix some work that you deconstruct and figure out how you can use those influences in your background to sort of create something totally new. Um, we all have a unique path um, through life. So how we grew up, you know, the language we speak, the religion we sort of have, the sort of uh, people we're around, our childhood friends, you know, our sort of experience in school, you know, the influences on TV that we used to watch, all these different things have an influence on how we view the world. Even identical twins will have sort of different sort of things about them that give them a unique perspective. So you have to figure out, you know, how do we unearth and sort of bring those different perspectives into our creative space whenever we're sort of creating work. So a lot of my work, you know, could not have been done without a lot of the experiences that I have had in the past. I used to break dance, I used to DJ, you know, I'm a military brat, so every three to five years I was moving around. All these different things I basically included into my practice. Not only the experiences and the influences in the past can be used in our work today, but even current experiences and current sort of problem solving sort of solutions we include in that sort of uh, practice. We include in our sort of process of creating. So my work is super colorful. And the reason why I add a lot of color is because I started sort of adding color when I was doing live art. So when you're doing live art, you don't have 
you know, all day. You don't have weeks to sort of complete a painting. You may have five hours at most. And when you're doing live art, it's like you want to sort of complete it, you know, at the sort of event that you're at. So for me, I used to do a lot of sort of realistic work uh, with oil, so I had to learn acrylics. And then I couldn't sort of waste time mixing colors to match a flesh tone. And I didn't have the lights, the right lights to sort of see the colors um, correctly, the sort of real nuances of the colors correctly. So I started just using the colors right out of the bottle. And my work started becoming colorful when I was just, you know, throwing yellow hair, throwing blue there, throwing yellow hair to represent this sort of sh shade or shadow, whatever. So basically I started including color into my work and I was loving it because I wasn't restricted. But I have color in my work because I was trying to solve a problem when it came to the amount of time to complete a painting. So I went from doing live art and sort of making my work a lot more colorful to the studio and saying, hey, how can I sort of take this a little bit further? I like how this sort of feels. I like how it looks. How can I refine it just a little bit more? So now that I sort of included sort of my experiences in the past, but also my experiences of, you know, in the current time, okay, now how do I sort of refine that? And that's like the last, the next stage is basically when you sort of see that voice, you see that style, you see something that you want to sort of go into, now it's refining it. How can I include more unique experiences into the work that, you know, I, I kind of like, I see this direction. How can I make it even more different, even more unique, even more of me? And that's when I get into the idea of you really have to constantly explore outside of your comfort zone. So when you're sort of going through the mirroring phase, you're, you're copying, and then you sort of remix in the explorative phase and refining phase, you constantly have to be uh, getting outside of your comfort zone and sort of exploring new experiences. So tr I, I always say traveling. Um, to new places will definitely give you sort of a new perspective on the work that you're doing currently. And sort of, you know, you're flying to a place like Japan, Argentina, uh, New Mexico, things like that. You're experiencing new sights and sounds and tastes and smells, and you're bringing all that back to your studio space from the outside world. And you're sort of saying, how can I use this into my sort of current work? How can I sort of change it? Because as you sort of gain new experiences in terms of, you know, the, the mediums that you use, learning a new language, learning a new sort of power tool, learning a new sort of uh, way of just like developing and process and, you know, you, you're gathering all this information, you now have sort of a different perspective. So now your perspective changes because you're a different person than when you were, you know, a week ago before you learned it. So you're always trying to sort of bring in more knowledge, more experiences, more sort of influences um, currently to sort of uh, help you sort of make new work that is different uh, than what you were creating, you know, almost a week ago. That is sort of how we try to sort of, you know, develop our voice or find our voice in the first place and sort of develop it. So at the beginning, you're mirroring from other individuals. You're just copying work, learning foundation, and then you're sort of remixing things from, you know, your previous experiences and, and influences, and then you're refining it by gaining more experience and influences as much as possible. So you're you're trying to create work and evolve it over time. So that is basically one of the things that we have to do as artists to sort of create new things. So as artists, especially young artists, students out there, you know, trying to figure out exactly how to find your style, it takes a long time. Everyone is on a different timetable. So everyone will find their sort of uh, style and voice and sort of what they want to do in the art studio at different times. And the more you're out there, the more you're learning, the more you're sort of gaining new knowledge and experiences and learning new things around the world, getting outside of your comfort zone, the easier you will feel that it is to develop your voice and your style because you have all these different things to pull from. So that is really what I wanted to say today in terms of finding your voice, your style, because my style, my voice, 
you know, wasn't developed overnight. It wasn't developed when I first started out. It took a long time to actually sort of figure out, you know, these are the colors that I really love. This is the medium that I really want to focus on, or this is the style or the voice or the thing that I want to add to every piece of my work to be like a signature of my work. So when people see my work, they're like, oh, that's a detour. That's a Thomas Evans detour piece. So it takes a long time. So I really, really, really wanted to emphasize that and sort of tell individuals that, you know, you're on a path that everyone else is on. You are not alone. Basically, you know, it is really up to you and how much work you put into exploring new things and sort of just getting outside of your comfort zone um, when it comes to sort of figuring out who you are in the art studio space or just the creative space in general because not only sort of visual artists go through this, but even, you know, poets and sort of uh, videographers, uh, people who do film will go through the same sort of uh, creative process as well. So I just wanted to say that and say that I hopefully helped you out today. And if you like um, sort of these videos, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so I can keep doing videos like this. And then if you have any comment or any sort of suggestion on what topics you want me to sort of hit on, make sure you write that in the comment section below and I will get to it and I will see you next time. Peace.